Alright, big idea again for probability. Knowing about probability helps us to compare events, to solve problems, and to understand the real world. Our concept today is to demonstrate an understanding of experimental probability. So in an experiment, what is probable? And then compare that result to the theoretical probability. So we are going to be conducting probability experiments and explaining those results using the predictions based on what we know about the theoretical probability. All right, so here we have our situation. We have Jenny and Morningstar who are putting colored cubes into a bag and notice it's a paper bag so we can't see through it. They used four blue, two red, two green, and two yellow cubes. A cube is picked from the bag at random. The theoretical probability that a blue cube is picked is four tenths or equivalent fraction dividing by two, two fifths. So we've divided by two top and bottom. Four tenths or if you were to choose five it would be two fifths. Jenny and Morningstar planned an experiment for the class. Each student would pick a cube from the bag without looking, then replace it, that's key, so there's still the same amount of cubes in the bag. And then she would do this 10 times. Here are the results of one experiment. So uh, the color, the number of times blue was picked was six times. Red was chosen once, green was chosen once, and yellow was chosen twice. All right. So we have the blue cube was picked six times. So in the experiment, the experimental probability in the experiment is the likelihood that something occurs based on the results of the experiment. So in the experiment, basically what happened? So we have the experimental probability, which is the number of times the outcome occurs. So how many times did we pick blue? Well, we picked blue six times. The bottom number is the number of times the experiment was conducted. Well, how many times did we pick? Well, we had six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it said there was ten times that they would do it, so it would be six out of ten times that the experiment was conducted. That's our experimental probability. Um, or we could do an equivalent fraction and it would be uh, three-fifths if we divided both by two, but six-tenths is our experimental probability. So our experimental probability is always the number of times it occurred with the number of times the experiment was conducted. Experiment was conducted and the number of times it occurred. So if we wanted to extend that, let's say how many red uh, how many times was red chosen? The experimental probability of red would then be one, because there was only one, out of how many experiments? Well, there was ten. So one-tenth uh, would be for red. All right, here we have Jenny and Morningstar who combined the results from ten experiments. They did it ten times, and that would mean that ten times ten uh, a hundred trials. So they had a hundred pulls out of the bag. A hundred times this experiment was conducted. The blue cube was picked 43 times as you can see. How many times is that it was the experiment conducted? Well it was a hundred and we can see that if we add that up it should be a hundred. So our experimental probability of picking a blue cube is 43 out of a hundred. Is the experimental probability close to the theoretical probability of four-tenths? This is where we go back and we use our equivalent fractions to help us to determine is it close or is it not? Did our experiment come close to what was theoretically supposed to happen? So here we have four-tenths as our theoretical. And in our experiment, we had 43 hundredths. So let's make that three look more three-ish. To make this an equivalent fraction, let's see if we can make this out of 100. Well, of course, we can, we can make this out of 100 by multiplying by 10. And of course, with ex, um, equivalent fractions, it's the same number on the top and the bottom. So we're going to multiply by 10. So 40 out of 100. Well, is that close to our experiment? 
yep, our theory, 40 out of 100, is pretty close to 43 out of 100. They're not that far apart from each other. So theoretically, um, we were supposed to pick blue around 40 times, and we did because 43 is very close to 100. So uh, the other thing that we need to realize, the more trials we conduct, the closer to the experimental probability uh, we may come. Sometimes it doesn't come close to the experimental, the theoretical probability. Sometimes it's very different. Generally it's not, but it can occasionally be quite different. But in theory, knowing what's theoretically supposed to happen the most is still going to help you make your choice. So for example, in this particular situation, knowing how many cubes we had of each, what was our best choice? What were we most likely going to pull out of that bag? Well, most likely we were going to pull out, sorry, the blue. It had the most cubes. Because remember, there were four red, sorry, four blue, two red, two green, and two yellow. So we should have had blue most often, and we should have had red, green, and yellow about the same amount. There was half of them uh, compared to the blue, so probably about half as many times as the blue, and as we can see in our experiment, that is about what happened. Not exactly, but it's fairly close. So we can always use our theoretical probability to predict what will happen in the experiment. Does it necessarily mean that's what's going to take place? No, but probably it's pretty likely. So remember, our experimental probability is a fraction comparing the number of times a specific outcome happens to the number of trials of the experiment. So that's how we communicate our experimental probability. All right, we're going to do some practice. So we have a coin flipping experiment was conducted. Here are the results. What is the experimental probability for flipping heads? Go ahead and press pause and try that now. All right, let's take a look. What was the experimental probability of flipping heads? Well, it looks like we had 10 trials, so there should be 10 on our bottom number. And heads, well, heads is H's, so we have one, two, three, four. So we will have four out of 10 um, is our experimental probability for choosing heads. What is our theoretical probability for choosing heads? Press pause and try that now. All right, let's take a look. This is our experimental. Let's check our theoretical. Remember, theoretical is possible outcomes on the bottom. So what are our possible outcomes? Well, we can get heads or we can get tails. So there's two possible outcomes. Uh, heads, how many heads are there? Well, there's only one. So about half of the time, we should be getting heads. Does our experimental probability, is it what our theoretically we're supposed to have? Well, we're supposed to have five out of 10. So it's not quite right. Why can the theoretical and experimental probability be different. Turn and talk to your Apple partner, your group member. Why do you think they can be different? Press pause and discuss that now. Well, why can they be different? Because in theory, it's only helping us predict what's going to happen. In an experiment, it can be different. Generally, though, it is close. So then how can theoretical probability help you to determine if your experiment was conducted properly. Well, if your experiment was conducted properly, you should have close to half. If you end up with no heads whatsoever, maybe there's a problem. Maybe the person you're working with has a trick coin and it's got two heads. You better check it out. Um, those kinds of things. So our theoretical probability can help us to determine if our experiment was conducted properly. Perhaps we need to go look back and see, is there something we didn't quite do accurately um, when we were conducting our experiment? So for example, if we had um, those cubes in a bag and our bag was see-through, well, maybe that wasn't a good choice because then everybody chose 
blue or whatever the color might be. So it might give us an idea of whether or not we've done something correctly or incorrectly in our experiment. All right, here we have another question. Reese conducted an experiment in which she set, she put red and blue interlocking cubes into a bag. She chose one cube, recorded the color, returned the cube to the bag, so the outcome number stays the same. These are her results. So red, she had many times. Blue, not as many. 14 red, six blue. Doesn't tell us exactly how many she put in. Hmm. I would bet from this results that she probably has more red in her bag than blue. All right, so our questions. How many trials did Reese conduct? How many trials? What was the experimental probability of choosing red? What was the experimental probability of choosing blue? Go ahead and try those with your partners right now with your group members. Press pause and do that now. All right, uh, experimental, sorry, how many trials? How many trials? Well, 14 plus six, she did 20 trials. What was the experimental probability of choosing red? Well, how many red did she have? Well, she had 14. How many trials? Well, we said there was 20. So 14 out of 20 is our experimental probability of choosing red. What is the experimental probability of choosing blue? Well, how many blue were there? There was six. Um, how many trials were there? Well, there was 20, 20 times she reached in and out uh, choosing a new color. Uh, so six out of 20 would be our probability of choosing a blue cube. All right, now you're on to your concept practice. Page 278, 279, numbers 1, 2, 4, and 5. Experimental probability and comparing that result to the theoretical probability. Was your uh, experiment fairly close to what was predicted in theory that should take place? Remember, as you're working, if you have any questions, to please ask.